All right, folks, welcome to the Fife Life, Australian Canary Hobby. I'm Mike. As you already know, these are my fifes, uh, and this is journal number 12. Uh, it's the episode where I'm officially going to launch and, and get started to say, wait, the breeding season is open. So uh, it's been a lot of preparation, and I uh, put a little update video about a week ago just showing uh, where the, the shed was up to and what stage I was at uh, as far as, uh, you know, setting up of the room at that point was where the cockbirds were all singled off at the top now well the shed's taken shape yet again and that is that uh, everyone is where they need to be everything is as done as it can be as far as preparation for the breeding and uh, that's what I'm going to talk about in, as I said in the episode is just these, these final little stages the little uh, polishing touches that we do and the last little bit of preparation for the birds before they are put together to mate hopefully fingers crossed because geez if you little buggers don't do something this year um i'd say i'll pull my hair out but uh, as you can see that's already happened <laughs> but uh look uh let's get into the episode i want to start off in the first part and i want to do some some very big thank yous all right it's the shout out section uh and look it's more of a, a thank you section is what that's what i'm going to call it uh and these names have been mentioned before, but uh, some real appreciation uh, I want to give out to, to everyone that's helped me get to this point. And it's, uh, it's a long year, and you know, the hobby is very labor intensive. For those of us who are in it, we know. Um, and it just feels like sometimes you're never gonna get there. But to get to this point now where, you know, within a week or so the birds will be breeding, I just want to say a very big thank you to both the Andrew and Peter for the birds. Without the birds, you don't have a breeding season. A very big thank you to the club, the Australian uh, Fife Club of New South Wales, and, and everyone on there that's just been very supportive. Now, also thank you for letting me be that, that platform now for me to share my own little posts. So if you want to see updates, photos, um, and just little bits and pieces outside of what is the, the episodes, uh, we did have a Facebook page. I had to pull it down, guys. It was too labor intensive. Um, and I've got a business page, and I've got a business page with, you know, 240 odd thousand people on that. So that keeps me plenty busy enough. So if you go to the, the Australian Pipe Club of New South Wales, their Facebook page, um, that's where you can see little updates on what I'm up to, what the birds are up to, and I'll be doing little photos and just things there. Um, you know, like their page, and if you like uh, what you see there with the club, jump over and become a member and, and really support the club. So thank you, Peter, thank you, Andrew, thank you to the club. Um, and uh, look, the other thing to say, a little shout out to, to Graham Davis, who I've mentioned before, Snooker Aces Fights. Um, I just jumped on again and he sent me a little reminder and said, Mike, just have a little look. There's, a, there's some tips and pointers on there. And uh, so I did, I jumped over and, and there was a lovely little refresher just to make sure we are on track. Uh, but thanks again, Graham, for the lovely message that you sent me. And uh, Matt, the uh, OG and the Canary Room, thank you for all the stuff that you've gifted me. Uh, that was the episode, What's in the Box? Um, but mate, this stuff is sensational. So without further ado, uh, I'm gonna just start to go through those little things and I'll talk about that as I go through. I'm gonna be talking about things like what nesting material I'm gonna be using um, and all that, just, just little chit chat bits as I do, all right? Let's get into it. So, uh, Let's talk a little bit about uh, the, the nest pans and, and uh, the nesting material that I'm going to be using for the breeding season. Uh, at the moment, as you can see as well, there's the solid dividers in the cages, uh, and then there's also the, the wire divider right next to them. Now, very shortly, I'm going to take these solid dividers out, and that way the birds will be able to see each other. I have, I've, I've had them sort of a little bit open on and off just for the last two days that I've had all the birds singled off, and uh, it's just lovely to see uh, see uh, the, the interactions that the birds are having. They're very excited to see each other. There's been some lovely signs already, um, and it just, it looks awesome. So I'm, I really feel like I'm on track. Back to the nesting. Now, the nest pans have been on the outside for two days. It's just a little canary room tip. It's a Keith Ferry tip, um, and it just helps the birds get acclimated to them. These are the new nest pans that I got uh, from Matt. Uh, nest pan liners are all glued in. And I love these little plastic cut ones now that I can take in and out easily, 
to check uh, the fertility of the eggs and, and what have you. But uh, I just love how they, they sit on. Same little clips that I've got uh, with the perches there. Just awesome. Awesome, awesome stuff. Now, nesting material. Uh, I did see someone post a question the other day, so I thought, yeah, look, I might talk about that. Uh, first thing is, jute. Now, normally what I'll do is I'll just buy a, a, one of the, the dog beds that are made from this hessian material, and I normally cut it up into squares, and then Indy and I, uh, painstakingly, it's a daddy-daughter job, but we pick it apart. Well, I don't have to do that this year because Matt has sent me a bag. Um, he sent me two bags, actually, so I've got two bags of nesting material. That's the first thing that I use, all right? And I have these really cool little uh, basket things that hang on the outside. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in there and they'll pull it through. Okay, and that means I can top it up from the outside. Previously, I've just clipped it on a peg, but this is, this is going to be way better. The next thing, I put just a little bit of uh, cotton wool or cotton balls. And I usually just sort of pull it apart so it's a little bit... Uh, broken apart and more sort of strandy as such and I'll, I'll put a little bit of that in. I tend to find the canaries like to use this um, as like a finishing off type material for the nest and then the last little thing that I'll put once the nest looks like it's kind of set and it's it's well established and made up and the hen's done a good job of getting it ready I just put a little bit of feathers in and I just tend to find that's they, they like that just to finish the nest off. So I've got some feathers from uh, from the malt, and I do give them a, a little bit of a spray, a little bit of a clean as such, uh, with the same stuff you spray, it's the, the Abitrol mite spray. Well, I spray them with that, and then what I do is I put them in a, a bag like this, it's not a blow away, but I've got bags that I've used previously that are perforated so that they don't get all yucky because they've been sprayed down and then I just sit it out in the sun and sun's a good disinfectant but it's also it just you know dries the feathers out once they've been sprayed with that mite spray you don't want anything nasty in the nests um, so that's what I use to finish it off and the birds really like that so you've got your jute material and then you've got cotton wool just to, to start to finish it off and then little feathers there they seem to they seem to like that that's just what I use. I'm sure other people have got other ideas out there and things like using Sharpie and I've heard of people using um, you know, washed dog hair if someone's got a Malamud or a Husky. I've heard of that being used, but I just keep it to these basic things. Alrighty, so with that said, I'm now gonna start to put nest pans uh, in with the hens. Then I'm gonna put some nesting material up and then I'm gonna pull the dividers out and uh, that'll be a signal to the birds that we're, we're here, we're at the breeding season. You can see there, the nest pans are in, and uh, so too is uh, the, the nesting material. I'm just putting in, at the moment, I've pretty much done all of the cages with it uh, down the other end, and the hens have jumped straight onto that nesting material, and all of them uh, are carrying it and they're carrying it at the back of their beaks. And I had been, a, sort of about a week and a half ago, I had been just putting little bits of jute in there just to have a look at how the condition of the hens was. And if you are new to the hobby, that's one of the signs that we love to see. We love to see uh, the, the hens placing that nesting material at the back of the beak, all right? If they're just fiddling around with it and they're flicking it around and they're not holding it, then that can be a sign that they're not quite ready. Um, but after a week and a half of just putting little bits and pieces in the cages, it was pretty obvious that they were they were very much ready, which is fantastic. As you see, there's a little hen here carrying some nesting material. And she's even got a couple little pieces in the nest, uh, which I'm sure she'll pull out and then fiddle around with a bit. They, from my experience with canaries, they will often build a nest and then pull it down and then build a nest until they're happy with it. Uh, but it's all systems go. It feels fantastic to be at this stage with the birds and we're on point, you know. It's the first over here, we're you know, the end of the first week of August and I need to be done and dusted by so the end of November, start of December. So 
the plan is that we're going to run pairs. I've got 12 pairs in the shed. Uh, in the aviary next door, I've got a single cockbird in there with three hens. Um, just to see what will happen there. They're just sort of out there to do their own thing, really. Um, but these are all the, the pairs that I'm really wanting to work on to build the clear in the yellow line. Uh, the heavily variegated and the dark birds and then I've got uh, down the end I've got a lovely little uh, variegated white cock going over a clear yellow buff hen to begin with and I've got a lovely uh, yellow cock going over a cinnamon hen uh, and then second round the plan is just to run I've got four or five cocks that are they're, they're be better quality birds and I'm going to run them over all of the hens so I'll be running cocks uh, over multiple hens in the second round but uh, this is where we're at. And so uh, what I want to do to finish off this, uh, this episode is I just want to wish everyone luck. Have a great breeding season. Uh, enjoy your birds. I've got some goals and I think sort of the first goal is I'd like to breed. I've got 12 pairs and a, uh, another three hens in there. I'm aiming for about 50, 50 young. Now, if I do better than that, that's fantastic. If I do less than that, that's okay. Um, I do think we'll have a better year than last year. The birds just seem in in better condition and, and it's they're fifes so they are uh, typically an easier bird to to breed it's my first year with these birds so i guess wish me luck guys um, and remember a happy fife a happy life and with that said the dividers are now coming out first one's out and that signals the start of the breeding season. So I'm just going to go and take all of the dividers out now and we're game on. So look out. Are you happy to see each other? You've been carrying on a bit and we go. Now I won't run the cocks in there until I see some of the other signs and signals, one of which will be uh, the cock birds hopefully feeding the hens through the wire. Um, that's what I want to see before I move that wire divider. The see-through divider will come out once I see that sign. All right, last one and there we go all right guys happy breeding season i'll see you for a halfway through update that'll be to let you know how we've gone after the first round best of luck to everyone enjoy take care for now